Welcome to this session, uh, Eco Civilization Talk on Art and Culture. Exciting discussion, uh, which is uh, fresh in uh, our family of topics that we have addressed so far. And uh, by all means, uh, not uh, the one that should be overlooked. And I think today's discussion that will be led by Teish, uh, our eco-civilization wing from Iran, and Yuko, our eco-civilization wing from Japan, both artists themselves and both those that are stimulating, especially younger artists and women artists to uh, make a strong steps forward. And today, uh, through their uh, thoughts and discussions, we will dive deeper into understanding why art and culture are so important for the future of our societies. So Tesh and Yuko, the floor is yours. Thank you. I'll start sharing. Uh, cool. Can y'all see it? Yes, yes, yes. it is great. Amazing. So before we dive into the conversation, I want to play one video first. If it comes up. I felt really different from most of the people in my high school and a lot of people around me throw around the word realistic. You always hear that's not realistic. Back then, all I ever heard was a starting artist. I never heard emerging artists. And I never knew an artist who was creating possibilities and living life based on their artwork. You can't create if you're worried about the world being on the verge of collapse. It's so important for all of us to do a gear shift and remember how to do things with love. If we are identified by anything, it's the heart, the compassion, the empathy. And I think you're starting to see that. Because everyone needs access to creativity. And you being a human in those spaces is transformative. If you find it something that you're passionate about, there's nothing in the world that's gonna stop you. The only thing that's gonna stop you is you keeping yourself from taking that first step. Some of the best art has been made in the hardest times. It's the little guys that are really driving the communities. And if they do make it, then we can all make it. And you are still here. It is your responsibility. I dare you to create the next story. I dare you to change the world. The world needs artists. Thank you everyone. So uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about that video and introduce myself and I'll pass it to Thais. Uh, thank you everyone for joining me and Thais today and thank you Violeta. I'm so honored to be here with each and every single one of you. My name is Yuko. I am a Japan chair of Eco Civilization. I am super excited, super excited. I am a multidimensional artist based in, currently based in New York City, but I'm originally from Japan. And the video just we share right now, it's something myself and my creative partner started making in the beginning of the pandemic. And it really, really taught us how resilient artists are. It, the story features the all the artists who are based in New York who are socially conscious using art to tell the story of humans. So um, I thought that was a great introduction to this conversation. So thank you so much. And Thais, take it away. Hi, everyone. I'm Thais Gayati, and I'm from Iran. 
Uh, I'm a musician and ethnomusicologist, and uh, currently I'm uh, doing my PhD uh, in ethnomusicology uh, here in Vancouver, Canada. And uh, the focus of my research is on the music and culture of the women of uh, Eastern Khorasan in Iran. And uh, I should say that these women um, work under uh, restrictions that religious and patriarchal rules of the region uh, have set for them. And, but um, other than that, they have found their um, ways to extend their limited uh, spaces. Uh, I've been introduced to this group by my dear friend Sabah, who is here today as well. And uh, I'm very glad to be uh, among you today and appreciate the uh, opportunity that uh, dear Violetta and um, with the help of uh, dear Stasha and Natasha and all of you provided for Yuko and I to talk about the connection of art and culture and sustainability. Uh, so really, how can art and culture benefit sustainability? I believe that uh, increasing consciousness leads us to care more about the world around us, the earth we live on, the air we inhale, other humans and other creatures. So now let's see how art can enhance our consciousness and how it affects our consciousness. Art is a human behavior and is produced in human mind. Our brain works based on three orders of consciousness at the same time. Uh, Yuko, please, uh, could you please? Yes, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, so our brain works based on three orders of consciousness at the same time. The first one, uh, refers to the biology of human body in the nature that surrounds it. Uh, next one, please. This type of consciousness is generated by processes that are acquired biologically to allow humans plan and prepare for future events and addresses the basic desires presented in the lower levels of Maslow hierarchy of needs that you can see uh, in the next slide. Uh, so this type of consciousness, as you can see, uh, addresses the basic needs uh, that we have, the physiological needs, the safety needs, and uh, even um, at those two higher levels but uh, it's just these lower parts of this uh, hierarchy of needs. Um, the second type of consciousness, which is part of the main scope of our discussion today, denotes the cultural experience in the selection and development of sensory capacities and cognitive processes. Sensory discrimination and cognitive processes are developed in culture. It means that what we perceive of the world around us, our senses and feelings are learned through and in the context of social relationships and their associated emotions. A delicious bowl of soup, for example, in one culture can be inedible in another culture, or a full-figured body can convey health and power in one culture while it shows the opposite in the other one. Likewise, one's perception of freedom is related to the culture and society of their interaction. Culture is in fact a way of life and the metaphysical essence of society. Society is a system of active forces and culture is generated by, by processes that are acquired biologically uh, and developed through social interactions and divisions of labor in society. Culture carries standards by which any product of the society is judged. 
we identify ourselves with these standards. And cultural practices are in fact processes of identification. Art as a cultural practice is also a process of identification and the medium for expression and communication like language. Although unlike language, art is a metaphorical expression that reveals the nature of feelings with the detail and truth that language cannot approach. It is also connected and tied to the culture in a way that the descriptive capacities of language are not. Now, we saw that art is formed as a synthesis of cognitive processes, which are learned through biological and social forces and cultural patterns of expression. But it is so hopeless to think that all we do in life, who we are and uh, the way we think is pre-designed by our biological and social forces. So the third type of consciousness gives humans autonomy and distinction. Individual consciousness is developed when a society from family to the larger means of it is open enough for its members to question the conventions, to explore who they really are and what they really want. The more humans are connected to their inner self, the more their individual consciousness is developed. And we should know that the majority of us live far below our potential because of the oppressive nature of most societies. Art can enhance human consciousness, no matter how simple or complex it is and under what aesthetic standards is created. We saw that it is related to basic human drives and to the biological need to maintain a balance among them. It can recall a state of consciousness that has been acquired through processes of social experience. The essential quality of art, in fact, is its power to create another world of virtual time and space. It refers to states in which people become keenly aware of the true nature of their being, of the other self within themselves and other human beings, and their relationship with the world around them. We often experience greater intensity of living when our normal time, time values change and appreciate the quality rather than the length of time spent doing something. The virtual time of art may help to generate such experiences. The last word is art is essential for the very survival of man's humanity. Uh, now I would like to pass this to Yuko to continue our discussion. But Teish, may I ask you a question before you pass the word on? And uh, if um, any other uh, would like to make a comment or ask a question, please go ahead. Uh, you gave us a very clear definitions of what art is, what culture is, and what's the mutual um, correlation and the impact on a human being. But uh, could you maybe share how, what does that mean to you? How did your personality and your uh, artistic dimension develop? Can you recognize what you were just sharing with us uh, in your life? Can you recognize these characteristics? Yes, for sure. Uh, so um, I come from a culture and I now these days I see that um, everything that I see in the world, every uh, feeling and everything that I perceive of the world around me is uh, tied to that culture. Even, for example, I know that a woman in Iran thinks of freedom uh, differently from 
a woman here in, uh, in the West and where I live right now. So uh, it's very interesting for me to see that how culture is uh, forming our perception of the world. And then uh, I see that how art and music that I'm working uh, always uh, um, makes me go back to my inner self to question myself, to think about how, who I am, who I really want. And uh, this is very interesting for me that how art can, uh, makes me think, makes me stop for a moment in my life and think of uh, uh, my perception of the world. And uh, this really enhanced my uh, vision to the world and i'm i really think that art is art and culture are really important that we think about when we think of future a future world that uh, have men with more humanity mm -hmm. with more consciousness and this is the whole thing that art helped me to do Thank you. Maybe this uh, connection to the global uh, wholeness and consciousness is a great starting point for you, Yuko. Uh, if uh, you want to pick up and continue with your part. But uh, Lydia and Dina and Saba, if you want to make comments, please go ahead and just raise your hand and uh, join us. Uh, just unmute yourself, Bina, please. Yes, could I add a comment? Oh, yeah, uh, Saba, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Yes, thank you so much, Thais, for your great presentation. It was really a new perspective for me. Uh, in, I have one comment or maybe a question, if you can help me more. Uh, you know, we have object in the world, which is physical, that we see, and we have subject. It is our interpretation from the object, from the outside world, to the um, internal world. I want to know that, uh, because I'm from out of uh, art community, that most of the artists uh, focus more on the object or on the subject. Which one is more important in the art community uh, from the perspective of artists? They are representing the interpretation from the outside world through the art activities, or they are representing their ideal idea from inside to the outside world. Which direction is mostly in our community active right now? Uh, I should say both. You know, it depends. It depends on uh, what you want to do with your art. Uh, the art I'm talking about mostly in this introduction is uh, about, um, it's not about um, making money or it's not about, uh, although it is very, very important uh, that Yuko will talk about it later. But uh, I mean, even that kind of art, uh, you know, artists has audiences. So you should, as an artist, uh, you should um, know what your audience wants. And even by that, uh, you should um, be conscious and you should uh, help uh, your audience enhance their consciousness through art and through your art. So uh, I think this is uh, the answer to your question. I don't know if you want me to... Uh, yes, yes, I understood it. Mostly about empowering the consciousness, which is very important. Yes, I understood it. Thank you so much, yes. Super, thank you very much. Uh, and Bina, uh, go ahead. You are an artist yourself. Maybe you can make yeah, a quick yes. comment on that and uh, raise the question that you wanted. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, one uh, one with, uh, with what Sabah had said, it is the question of expression of an artist, how they want to express, whether it is a subject as an object. Um, uh, it's like uh, you really don't need to have an object to sometimes uh, 
uh, talk about your subject. You know, it depends. You, you can have an abstract art. You can have any form of an art to convey certain things. Um, art is basically, I feel it is communication. It's a tool of communication to yourself and to the world outside. Now, how you perceive every artist, when I paint something, I paint with the concept in my mind. But when a person look at it, it is not required that person has to take with the same concept. He will perceive the work or he'll perceive the music or any form art according to his own mood. So art allows the other person to explore, wherein if it is anything else, it has closed boundaries. But when it comes to art, it's very open. That is why it is connecting to you, yourself and to your consciousness. Because there is no borders for it. There is no limitations for it. However deep you want to go, however top you want to float, you can float. So there is never a subject as such, you know, okay, this has to be expressed in such a way. For mm. me, uh, art, is, art binds human beings. Art and culture is what holds people together. Knowingly, unknowingly, everybody is a piece of art. So when you become an artist, I believe you become closer to the, the higher power which you believe in. You know, you will start looking at every human being as a piece of art. So whether it is, uh, uh, however it is painted, you will start appreciating that the distance between countries, people reduces, I feel, if you approach them to any creative force. So that is why, uh, for me, it's artists traveling inside than traveling outside. So for me, art is more to, you know, uh, more when you know yourself from inside, it's very easy to know the other person which is there, you know, next to you. And it really connects people so well. You really don't need to even um, paint something. If two people meet, your creative force is so strong, you automatically get attracted. You automatically uh, build it together. We really don't need uh, actually mm -hmm. any form of art. The creative force has to be there in you. Super, so Dina, thank I you. Think. And we have That's Lydia fine. wants thank to you. come in and comment as well. So let's hear her comment on what you were just saying, yeah. please. Thank you. Uh, in this context, I would like to share an experience uh, I had made a few days ago. I worked uh, online with an uh, international team. Uh, it's quite a well-connected team. And uh, one of the members shared that, uh, unfortunately, he got ill and it's very serious illness. Everybody was touched and everybody wanted to share feelings, support in different way. So as me, but something was missing and I realized that I miss touch. That, that was the moment that I would really like to put my hand somewhere. And there was a silence for a second, I don't know, I cannot measure it with time. And suddenly one of the members said, would you allow me that I sing you a song? And she started to sing. It was very short intervention, spontaneous. Mm -hmm. But still today I'm touched with the way how she was singing. And also it was virtual. She, 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 she was a singer, we didn't know before, <laughs> so mm -hmm. she, her voice was really great. But uh, that voice connected us in this virtual environment. It was really for the first time us that we are sitting at the same, in the same room and us that we are touching each other. Mm -hmm. So for me, that was really an example the, of uh, the power of art. Fantastic. Really yeah. just proves the point, really. Yeah. And maybe you could go ahead and continue this really positive vibe with the sustainability and how can art contribute to that, please. Absolutely. Well, what a 
I, I love having these intimate conversation yeah. and it just reminds us that we're all human beings first, right? We're mm-hmm. all artists in one way or the other. And I think that's something that eco-civilization community embodies so well. So I'm so excited to dive into the next part of it. Let me go back to sharing the screen one more time. So sustainability part of the conversation, get to go dive in. And I, I'm assuming that you're all familiar with the sustainable development goals here. And if you have any specific goals that your practice and your project is focusing on, just let us know in the chat and so that we can really get to know. Primarily, I'm very new and I would love to know your practice a little bit more. And for some of you might be familiar, the last year was an international year of creative economy for sustainable development. And in, a, in addition to what taste and we have already communicated Art is a culture, is essential for survival, for us, our survival. And not only that, art really proves that during the pandemic, especially, like how many people sing, just like you just shared, Lydia, and art, singing, music, that's what cheered us up, right? That's what really comforted us. And in addition to that, art and culture has economic development, job creation, promoting democracy, social justice, solidarity, and all these beautiful things. And so I mentioned um, something that eco-civilization beautifully and powerfully embody is, I believe, number 17 the partnership for the goals, which is my favorite. I think mm-hmm. as an artist and creator, like no matter what it is, like we get to come up with a beautiful invitation through our creativity. That's why I love this number 17, the partnership for the goals. And so we share knowledge, we share that we're being human and we share our value and technology and innovation and we get to sustain each other. And in order for us to thrive for sustainability of culture and art and for this earth and humanity, and we really are in the very, very exciting position and a time to see what does it mean to cultivate the partnership amongst the humanity? I think that we're in a such an exciting time. And I just wanna share a few challenges. As I mentioned in the beginning of the conversation, there are a few challenges that I experienced myself and Thais and I had a few conversations around what challenges we're facing as an artist. And so we're gonna start diving into that. Some of the cultural oppression in our, in our time right now. For example, art and educational system. Art is usually elective. Art is often considered as luxury like when uh finances the budget cut happens art is usually the first one of the first things to get cut right and in the beginning of the video one of the artists shared i never seen a I've only heard the words struggling artist, not a thriving artist. And children, not, and I personally heard at so many people say, art is not a real job, or stop daydreaming, or struggling myth, struggling artist myth. Those are all around us, right? And another thing that I see is art, using art as a luxury or exposure. And so there are a lot of cultural oppression happening in that. And during the pandemic time, as a global, global citizens, we saw the inequality and in digital accessibility, like internet, we take it for granted, but it's not available for everyone. So how do we bring equity and access into that? Intellectual property, right? And that's one thing that's very blurred because technology is changing constantly. For example, Web3 is happening, NFT is happening. So many people are working internationally. So how does that work, mm. right? They're still discovering that part. And then one other thing is a disparity of the income and resources. Just an AAA class celebrity versus someone in a local community, an artist who are aspiring to become a painter, to become a musician. The income disparity is huge. And another resource is available to prestigious institution versus again, the independent artist. That's a completely different thing. And on top of that impact of the pandemic, right? So I just want to share a few numbers. Um, supporting independent artists is one of my passion. And globally, 33% of employees in creative industries are self-employed. 33%. That's a pretty high number, right? 
and just for the New York. And if you know any number in your own particular area, please share. I would love to know more. In New York, during the pandemic, art, arts worker experienced unemployment 63%. And 95% of arts worker lost creative income. That's massive. That is a massive number. And that is an overall number. And statistics have shown that people of color and women, the number goes up even higher. So that's something to think about, right? And so, for example, I would love to bring up the example supporting artists. What does that mean? right? Supporting with an artist, partnering with artists. I'll use an example as purchasing of an art. It's one thing to purchase from your artists in your own local community and supporting really the livelihood and her practice. That is one thing. It's another thing purchasing from the auction, spending billions of dollars, and that money goes to the collector. The money goes to the so-and-so. And what if the artist is no longer alive on this planet? It's a completely different way of putting money into that. And I would love to also acknowledge, as we shared earlier, the definition of art, the definition of culture itself is also super vague, very broad. And we, we really get to identify when we have this conversation, what exactly are we talking about? What is our definition of art and culture? And something that I've really realizing recently is when we talk about creative economy versus art and culture, different people act in a different way. More people are drawn to creative economy of, for example, impact investor. They're more interested or drawn to that particular word as opposed to when we use the word art and culture. People who are more human telling you know, or folks who are more in the civilization, we're drawn to the word like art and culture, right? So when we talk about this topic, what does exactly mean? And I think that on its own is a, such a beautiful invitation for whoever we're talking with and have understanding with each other and ask ourselves a question. And what are we assuming? What is our experience with art, right? So I think that's something that I really wanted to bring it up in this conversation. And then one thing that I would love to close with in the section before I pass it to amazing Bina is sustainability of art and culture depends on sustaining the people who hold the torch. And as we've been saying, that's all of us. That's each and every single one of you. So let us sustain ourselves, Let's, let us sustain each other and support mm -hmm. each other and be with each other as a human. Yeah, I know that Violet is going to pause us <laughs> in the conversation. <laughs> well, the topic is way too important not to, for at least for a second, and get some comments back from uh, the rest. Uh, but uh, I think this is a really powerful message. Um, and uh, Yoko, you were on the stage when uh, pandemic hit. Yeah, and uh, how was it? I mean, what, uh, how did the art and culture community react? Uh, were you guys at least connected? Were you sharing the, the burden or uh, was it a competitive edge that took over? Um, and uh, how did really people uh, relate? Because um, I have very limited experiences, but here, and we have one um, big event once per year for young uh, musicians that uh, community, especially the business community supports and funds um, over and over again. And um, the first concert in pandemic time actually brought more contributions than a live concert. <laughs> I mean, when uh, was happening in enormous circumstances. So people were basically more generous. But what was your experience? How did, and, and I have to ask this because I have this burning question that, that really bothers me. Uh, why are artists always or more and more in the hands of philanthropes? Mm -hmm. I feel that that's a bit degrading the importance of artists. Uh, because I think that's part of a social framework and social infrastructure. Shouldn't the communities and countries and states take a better care of that? What's your opinion about that? Yeah, 
That's such a great question. And I think I myself am also searching for the answer. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's during the pandemic has really opened up so much about the lack of infrastructure for our community. Right. And and as we mentioned earlier, most of us are self-employed, so we don't have a clear infrastructure and support system from the government. But maybe because of that, arts community, at least in my immediate community, our support system got stronger. I see rarely the competitiveness amongst us because we were so clear that what we create the music, the movie, our poetry, the dance are so sacred and so important in this time. We knew that that will bring us healing. So, so many of my friends started streaming right away, maybe just operating this, um, offering this weekly check-in circle right away. A lot of people transition into that support system relatively quick. And it was so beautiful to see that. And there's some of the art forms are easier to translate that into digital format. However, like my prim- one of my primary background is in the theater, as Fiona did talked about being on stage. And the theater industry was pretty badly in- impacted during the pandemic. Theaters were closed down and we didn't know what to do. But because of that, theater industry and people who are making the theater, we really got clear on what is working and what is not working and what type of theater making that we want to create as a culture. So it was a beautiful opportunity and so many people rise up and this is not working. The systematic injustice in theater making, this power dynamic, which is very, the essence of struggling artists. Myth. So many people have been exploited, but battled it because we were taught or we assume that we are supposed to pay dues. We're supposed to work hard in order for us to get there, whatever that there is. So there are so many things that were th- taken out of the rug and say, this is something that we want to change. So it was very exciting time. And when I performed, I had a digital streaming, digital hybrid performances in February of 2021, which when theater was still closed, we didn't know what was doing. And during that time, a lot of COVID protocols for entertainment industry was not set completely. We're still trying to figure out, I think it was a second or third wave that was hitting the New York, but our team came together and our basic principle working together, team of seven, where we become human first. No matter what we're doing, we're human first. We check in with each other and create this message, share this message with the world. So it was such a beautiful experience. And that's the beauty of being an artist and creator, creative people. We figure out the way. We're problem solvers, we're critical thinker, we're innovator. So there are a lot of elements that we learn, explore and continue to evolve from here. So, so you think also that you should be rewarded based on market rules or uh, is there a higher calling that should be awarded by the social impact and importance? I think we don't have to choose one or the other. I think there is always a third option and there is a yes and more. Yes and more. Of course, there are so many of us want to be able to sustain ourselves and more, right? I've been... Like just a disclaimer, pandemic time when I was receiving unemployment was the most stable time in my life hmm. because everything before I was a freelancing, I was self-employed, one gig to the other. So it was never stable. So I experienced the sustainability of life for the first time during the pandemic, which is very ironic, right? Hmm. But whether we, sh- so in the context of should we all be socially conscious artists, should we all be commercial? People get to choose. Some projects are more socially impacted, even when the intention is more commercial. So I think we don't decide as an artist. We, ha- we might have an intention. Mm-hmm. Um, we are offering an invitation to the world. Mm-hmm. I think that's, that's my take on that. Mm-hmm. I don't know Thais has different opinion than that, but. Thank you. Okay. 
Tish, do you want to come in and comment that or? Uh... Yeah, sure. Uh, so during pandemic, uh, I know that musicians uh, also uh, had very, very difficult time because all the classes were canceled, all the concerts were canceled. And uh, if government, if a government like uh, our government in Iran uh, um, couldn't or didn't um, help uh, artists and they had really, really difficult time. But mm. about uh, being, and as an artist, about being commercial or just uh, express our inner self through our art, I should mention that uh, I, I agree with Yuko, it's both. And I think uh, we should understand that in the post internet era, uh, we have, we, all of us, our generation have uh, hybrid identities. We, cultures are not just like uh, enclosed islands or spheres anymore. And uh, they're merging to, together through internet. And uh, it helped a lot. It helped a lot uh, for younger generation, I think. But uh, I know like the culture bearers and the older um, artists have a very difficult time during this post internet era because they're not familiar how to um, present themselves. But uh, I think it's, uh, it's really um, governments, uh, it's on governments to support these kinds of artists. Other than that, I guess uh, younger generation has found their, um, their ways to expand their limited spaces, I think. And uh, it's really both in, we should think of money because uh, we, we want to leave as well. And I, uh, I think um, sometimes people think that, oh, if you, as an artist, if you just think of money, you're not an artist. But, um, you know, as I said, if uh, the lower levels of hierarchy of needs are not addressed, mm. no, no person can go in the higher levels mm. and no person can uh, grow uh, and work on their individuality and their inner self. Mm. That's very important. Thank you, Tish. Uh, and uh, it's getting really late for uh, Bina, but she's bravely uh, sticking with us. Uh, and Bina, so what's your take on that? Uh, you've seen it all and uh, you've been in the art circles for a long time, um, being an artist yourself and also at the same time you're leading a G100 circle for art and culture. So uh, what's your take on this? Well, I also believe that art and culture binds humankind together. And it is very important for this divisive world which is there now. But if it is sustainable, <laughs> the important thing is uh, the crafts art which we are talking about is dying down because people who are artists traditionally, otherwise also, has to leave that and go in search of different meadows to make their living. I like to say an example, uh, a, a very good friend of mine who's a dancer, who's earning, in fact, I should say minting money, went to a village and one of um, a relative asked, okay, what do you do? He said, I dance. He said, okay, but what do you do for your living? So, <laughs> so it is very difficult for people to understand like art can be a living. Art has to be given it free, but the time taken, it is so, it is so, like so much now today is because of this pandemic, mental health is becoming a very important 
issues you know otherwise also for the, the younger generation everybody needs a psychologist everybody needs to talk to somebody all that we believe in we are ready to pay money we are ready to pay money for medicine but art has a healing power nobody is ready to understand so i feel the important part it is it's very important to understand the power of art number one till the time it is and if you don't understand it becomes sustainable it cannot be sustainable more than an art that an artist has to know the rights of an artist that's why as she's as yuko said you will mint money after you die and that will go to the collectors the artists have actually died uh, poor and you know not the family gets nothing but the next generation or the next uh, the collector is making money out of it it becomes a business so till the time we know our rights and you know the copyrights you know it is very difficult to um sustain especially okay music or things like that must be have uh, copyrights but there's so much of form of arts does not have copyrights but people don't know anything about it like even though you find a good painting in the internet people don't mind taking it and sharing without even giving a single line of credit who belongs it like who has painted it it is taken as an advantage it is taken as an availability so it is so important to educate the people around the right of an artist the what is the value of a copyright all these things to be understood and uh, as she said youngsters has found their way to make money it's just money okay it is just like a bubble it can break it can sustain but the real art forms has to be taken forward that means a crowd of people like us has to join hands educated i in g100 art leadership uh, we have around 18 to 20 countries now we are not focusing on only artist artist because i don't believe that we need to group uh, you know hold each other's hand to develop anybody's uh, skills we need people to help each other to bridge this particular you know uh, issue and cross over as uh, yes why can't an artist think about money it can be a living it is giving you pleasure so why can't you pay for it so that particular thought has to be brought and that bridge has to be crossed and that is what a sustainability bridge which we call you know so this is very important a very important point to be sustainable uh, all cultural diplomacy gender equality is like uh, i uh, i'm actually a privileged artist i'll say i've born up in a good family i lived my life best i never had any problem selling my paintings but when after joining uh, wiki art leadership talking to other women i really didn't know that the value of an artist art made by a woman is lesser than a value of an art made by a man i never thought about it you take about the bigger positions in art community it is headed by men i never thought about it because i feel g100 is whatever it is happening for the outside for me as a person it is growing my own uh, you know i'm getting educated I'm, I'm because i'm able to open eyes to issues so then only you raise your voice you really want to do something about it so i feel g100 art leadership will be more focusing on that than just the skill development we want to join hands where we talk about all these things you know find a way for that to be together hold each other's hand how to cross if one person is also able to benefit out of it i feel it is successful mm. So that is what we are looking at. So all this gender equality, all that is there on side, but how to cross? And so, so we we are concentrating on people who are art collectors, or who people who love art. They don't have to be an artist to become a G hundred member. I say you want you want to help an artist, and you feel that artist, you know, it is it is worth spending time for them. Then you know you join your hands. Like we are talking about um, art, like your eco civilization logo was so similar to what uh, um, uh, Yuko has said about point number seventeen logo. It is binding people together. When I met uh, Violetta, I never really didn't know what she meant by eco civilization. But then I realized, as a person, you can even build about you know what you have been doing. Talk about people who have. Uh, 
you know, has lived their life for a civilization. We really don't know all these things. I think education is so important in the world of art. Mm. You know, art, when you want to join a college, you can become an engineer, you can become a doctor, scientist, all welcome. The moment you want to take an art line, the first question from your own parents is, why this? How are you going to live? <laughs> yes. So till the time we cross all that, I think it takes time. But I think uh, today's generation are more open than I think my generation, my time. But today, younger ones are more open for, you know, learning different uh, techniques. And in even uh, in companies, people are looking with, you know, creative uh, uh, men, you know, creative power people, because as Yuko said, we are sustainers. We are innovators. We are troubleshooters. We are able to think outside the box. So all these things are also creative artists. You know, it is not just somebody who paint. So I think sustainability is the most important point in the world of art today. Mm -hmm. And I think we should work towards that. And G100, I think that is what, after 25 numbers, I really want to really start some work on it, on, on ground, we are just now adding our numbers because more the, the, we need to have a minimum force. Uh, but as, as you said, uh, we were talking about uh, road safety. You know, I really want to start the project road, road safety and artists. That will give, you know, uh, you are talking about a problem through the, through the art forms. Mm. Mm. That will give, you know, more, uh, because I have been talking to the concerned person uh, for such a long time about artists, nothing went to his head. But the moment I talk about uh, uh, his subject of safety, so he said, okay, that's done, you know, because, so we need to approach sometimes from the other way around and bring in art and friend. So I think it's very important to have a sustain sustainable than just talking, we should start doing something about it. And small little movements also makes uh, a lot of difference. That's what I feel. Mm. Thank you, Bina. This is uh, really deep. And uh, I'd like to continue to uh, engage uh, with uh, eco-civilization and arts and culture um, circle uh, uh, within G100, especially when you mentioned you're going to be focusing more on rights and equal opportunities and equal value of female and male uh, artists. Um, because if we want to create a new society, uh, we need that. We need to understand the true value of art and culture. I would say we need to understand the itigai of art and culture. Yes. And what is the itigai of art and culture? Uh, and, and discuss this and, and bring it uh, to a surface and, and then build around it. Because in the past, we know there were periods in human history where artists were really highly appreciated. So what happened? Uh, when and why did artists lose this uh, recognized and uh, appreciated role in, in the development of a society? I mean, maybe in fact, art, art was a, one of, when it comes to India as a culture, art was a very important force to, because we didn't even have scriptures. It was conveyed to generation to generation through art. Mm. All that is okay. It's all beautiful. But when it comes to sustainability or living, then, you know, the value goes down. So that is what we need to build in. Mm. Any comment on that? Yuko? Yeah, I just wrote it in the chat. Um, I think it's, I think it's deeper than that, right? Art, it's so powerful. Art is way too powerful and the people were afraid. Like how many times in the history people burned the book because they were too powerful. They didn't want people to know the knowledge. Even right now in the United States, there are so many books are banned in the schools because mm. they don't want people to know the truth and the story. So people know how powerful we are. That's why we are that people are oppressing and ex excluding art and culture. So that's how powerful we are. And we have to remember that and we have to educate people into sharing exactly what Bina was saying. This is our right. This is, I think art and creativity is our birthright and a gift at the same time. Mm. You know, so. Fantastic. Lydia, do you have some comments on that? I mean, especially from the perspective of Slovenian society as well. 
The first reaction was uh, was very much with Yuko when she was talking now uh, that uh, art is too powerful. And I would add, it's very difficult to control art. <laughs> so I think that might be one of the reasons and what we can also see in the last years happening in Slovenia. That's true. I think that is a global trend. Uh, and uh, also Yuko uh, mentioned it that uh, there is a need for control because uh, certain forces would like to have a total control and that is already contradiction in terms. There is no total control and people still strive for it. Uh, and uh, it's true that artists are the ones who challenge that. They, they challenge the boundaries, they challenge the um, what we understand as normal, what is uh, possible, what is acceptable. That is, uh, but it's not only artists. And here I would invite the artist community that there are many of us who are not considered to be artists per se, who have the same role in the society. You know? uh, and uh, they, we are in all professions. So uh, how can we connect that too? This is something we, we are trying to do in eco-civilization as well, to bring forward people uh, who uh, dare to uh, challenge the boundaries, uh, who dare to, to, to look beyond what is known and imagine something that hasn't been done yet. And that of course is creates a conflict situations because old always tries to preserve the, especially the establishment always tries to preserve the old. Um, and uh, because population, especially in Europe is getting older, uh, older people by definition with of course rare exceptions, uh, they turn towards conservatism because they cannot handle changes anymore as good as uh, they used to or the young people can. Uh, so again, art maybe here can play an important role to take this fear away, you know, and to, to, to bring playfulness back because uh, modern society forgot about playfulness. We don't play anymore. We're not, you know, we kind of gave up. Everything has to be like computer logic, has to be on off has to be very squared, has to be very predictable. And life is not like that. And uh, here I am missing artists. For example, uh, I miss in Slovenian society and maybe it's in others as well. I miss good comedies, good comics, good uh, jokes. I mean, where, where is this art gone? You know, we, we don't have that anymore. And uh, that's what brings playfulness to society. That, that's where, what creates room for different points of view. Uh, so what's your take on that? Maybe have artists lost touch with art? You are absolutely uh, said uh, right, because art is just like a child, you know. You, you can just express the way being a child, they just really don't think what they, how can they express. You just see a balloon on the road, you can just take it and run away with it. But the moment when we grow up, there is a lot of things who I am, you know, a lot of things which creeps into your system and you lose the child in you. When you lose the child in you, I think you lose the art in you. Artists, uh, you know, you 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 should have that uh, power of creation is power of exploring yourself like a child, without any uh, you know any restrictions to it. So what you said is right. Today's everything is on and off. It is not you know it, there's the structure to everybody. Everything is expected to be in in a particular form. Where art is not like that. Art has no boundaries. So child does not have any boundaries. So you have, you have exactly said the right thing. It has to be, you are missing it because there's more of uh, um, very art, uh, artificial people than artistic people around you. <laughs> that is how the world is taking the form. So we need to explore, we need to bring the child in us to live our life uh, artfully, I think. And if I could add a little practical comment, yes. and uh, you know, according to the um, conversation, I understood that uh, right now 
during, for example, the very crisis time of the pandemic, uh, artists are more seeking the support from the people. In my opinion, the responsibility is vice versa. You know, in art community, art has the potential to increase your vibrational energy uh, from the perspective of energy I'm talking about that. When you are of highest energy, your neural connectivity will be changed. Even you can find neural rewiring. So your decisions will be different. Your quality of your life will be different. In my opinion, in the time of crisis, in very difficult time, uh, the first leaders to overcome this challenge are leaders. You should not seek for any support from the society. You are the person that you have to support the society. In my opinion, it is uh, the first responsibility of artists, especially at the time of crisis. And if we change our direction of perspective, I think it will be more effective. Okay, a provocative question back. But um, what we are seeing is also, uh, and maybe this is already uh, the, the shift that you're talking about, is that more and more artists become politically, uh, they express their political belonging. Uh, and is that good or bad? Is that, can art be also politically engaged uh, or it should serve the humanity all the time? In my opinion, no, it should serve the society. Because in, for example, US elections was a, was, are great examples. You know, artists started to vote openly for one or the other. And we've seen it here as well. You know, artists are repositioning themselves politically. In my opinion, in the society, everything has its own structure. We have to work on the power of each dimension. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, the perspective of political perspective has its own structure. Artistic perspective has its own structure. And we cannot, uh, you know, a healthy society structure uh, uh, has its own dimension in the full power with the most potential and competent persons. We cannot mix them uh, or a kind of, um, you know, the position is not correct. And I don't uh, mind of this uh, perspective to be effective. Mm. To use it, for example, a person who is fully talented in art and political position, it is not a correct idea or for example, uh, importing the different perspective, which are not related to the political issues into this, this perspective. It is not a healthy structure of the society. Great, Yuka. I'm curious to see what's gonna happen because I, I think all art are essentially political. Mm. All arts are essentially political, I think. So how people receive it, it, again, it's an open invitation. It is a question that we throw to people. And another thing is that, yes, more people are, are actively involved in the political aspect of it, but that is not a new thing. It has been there. More people are open to seeing it. It's more become more visible, but it's been there all along. So I think more artists are... A, or more artists are becoming louder with their voice and B, society's more open to seeing that, mm. whatever the interpretation is. Mm. Cool. Dave? Uh, yeah, I, I also think that uh, artists have are really powerful in, in a society. Uh, from before, uh, I mean, uh, in, in all of the, for, for example, in Iran, I know that in uh, different parts of Iran, uh, there were these uh, storytellers and musicians who were the elder of the society. And uh, they were the, uh, they were, at the point at the um, highest level of that society and decided everything uh, but as you know all the societies today 
and, and in this political uh, uh, atmosphere that we're in uh, are, are oppressive because they, as you said, they want to control people. They want to have more control on people. And as Bina said, art is uh, unpredictable. And uh, you can um, experience anything through art. And so that's why artists and art is, is not uh, preferred by um, people on the power in the power to be to work and to be powerful in society anymore, I guess. Uh, but um, we should, and also I wanted to add that uh, we should know that uh, in the post-internet era, people are really really harder to be controlled and up oppressed um, for example singing for women are um, forbidden in Iran in public but now we can see that many many women are singing in social media mm. and uh, you know they can prosecute some of them but not all of them mm. so I think artists are find their ways to speak for themselves mm. very powerful messages um, at the same time we're uh, actually already uh, over an hour and uh, it's uh, time to wrap up a little bit this discussion but the messages that we shared are really deep and strong so uh, in eco-civilization for example we are based on the emergence of new so I'm inviting the artist community to be very active and co-shaping uh, the future of uh, understanding what the eco-civilization could actually be because uh, we can practice there what you just taught us. Uh, we can practice what you feel that the art should stand for. So I do hope that your voices will be stronger and stronger. You'll bring more members on board from art community. Uh, and uh, engage in all topics um, because this kind of spirit, uh, as Bina said, uh, gets additional dimension and strength when engaged in particular problem solving. Uh, and that's where we can prove then that the art is opening the mind and the spirit and the heart and uh, breaks the boundaries no matter which topic you bring on board. Uh, so I'm inviting everyone for the last thought. Uh, let's start with our guests, maybe Lydia, and then Saba, uh, then Bina, and then our, basically, the co-creators of today's event, uh, Yuko and Tesh. Please, Lydia. Um, it just happens. Well, it's not true. We know all that I'm here with you today, and I'm very happy uh, with the discussion. Uh, a lot has been said, but I would say there's even more that has not been said and what it's uh, there waiting for further discussions. And I'm looking forward to, to join you next time. Thank you. And you know what, Lydia, Bina is looking for a art and uh, culture uh, eco uh, note for uh, Slovenia. So if you're interested, you guys just stay in touch and, uh, and maybe you could uh, cook something interesting uh, together. Thank you. Uh, Sava? I just to say my gratitude for today's presentation, for today's discussion. It was really wonderful, informative, and uh, I really appreciate this time. And also meet uh, new members and see you again. All. It was amazing. Thank you so much for your time and presentation. Thank you, Sava Bina. Thank you so much, Shivanita. Thank you so much, Yuko and Thais for you know calling me. It was actually beautiful. It has energized my day. <laughs> so I'm ready for tomorrow. Um, uh, art is a multi-dimensional subject. Uh, from your root chakras, it goes to your, all your conscious. So uh, 
this is a very small start i think and uh, and eco civilization as like you know emergence of something new for the better society and better life uh, i think art and culture can be an important part to develop that so we'll work in hand in hand to you know bring in more members more subjects to talk about and uh, really do something about it and i'm so happy to be part of uh, this team and yeah thank you so much thank you cheesh i wanted also to thank for this opportunity dear violeta it's very uh, thoughtful uh to think of uh, art and culture as a as a part of this eco civilization movement because it it is very essential and again i can say that art is essential for uh man's humanity and i want to thank to you all uh that we're here today and uh it's really great to be connected again through this community thank you so much thank you and yuko i echo what i said thank you so much for this opportunity violeta and thank you so much everyone for being here and thank you tay for being a co leader for this session and i learned so much during this process so much this from this conversation and again we're scratching the surface we're in the baby stage of collaborating and co-creating with art and culture so i'm super thrilled and excited and humbled to be growing with each and every one of you thank you so much thank you and first i'd like to thank also to all who are following us on social media we were uh, live streaming this event uh, but above all thank you uh, the eco civilization wing for japan and uh, iran um, tej and uh, yuko because you really made an effort but uh, we are very delighted uh, for my dear sister bina who leads uh, art and culture uh, section at G100 to join us and I'm sure that we established a good connection today so this uh, stream of uh, energy will be floating back and forth and uh, fertilizing uh, many circles uh, but today's day would not be as uh, uh, joyful and engaging uh, without Lydia and uh, Sava so thank you very much for being uh, in the basically panelist section, uh, active and uh, with uh, great comments and, and um, questions. So uh, yes, as uh, you guys said, this is just the beginning uh, and I'm looking forward to our next sex, uh, session, whenever that's gonna be. And you know, that's up to you. Whenever you're ready, let us know and we will host another discussion on art and culture and whoever and whatever else you bring at the table. So thank you very much. Have a lovely day, evening, night, and uh, see you soon. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye.